Welcome to the Selling from the Heart podcast on the SalesCast Network. You've joined a global movement of sales professionals who are dedicated to being authentic and building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. Together, we are on a mission to bring sincerity and substance to the sales profession we all love. Get ready to be inspired and equipped as we join our hosts, Larry Levine and Daryl Amy. I'm thrilled to introduce to you a revolutionary tool that will change the way you understand yourself and others. Our partners at the Y Institute have created the Y.OS Discovery Platform, a powerful tool that in just 10 minutes can help you uncover your core motivations, how you bring them to life, and what others can expect from you. This is more than just a self-awareness tool. It's a game changer for coaches and those who wanna help their clients reach their full potential. If you're a coach or a sales leader, Go to whyinstitute.com and look for the Y certification. We'll put the link in the show notes. When you reach out to the Y Institute, let them know you heard about it on Selling from the Heart, and you'll be on your way to helping your people discover what drives them. Don't just take our word for it. Go to whyinstitute.com and see the powerful impact the Y.OS discovery can have on your life. Welcome back to the Selling from the Heart podcast. Your co-host, Daryl Amy, here today with Larry Levine. What's going on, Larry? Another day, another podcast. Super excited for this one. Can't wait to get with Brad Adams. Always good seeing you, Daryl Amy. Uh, We're going to have a really awesome conversation today. And speaking of really awesome, we are pre-recording this, but I know as this is going live, we just finished the Selling from the Heart experience. And Larry, I just got to say, the, what happens, I know this already, what happens when you get like-hearted people together working towards being becoming better versions of ourselves, reigniting, re-inspiring, refiring, refueling, all of the things we've been talking about here on the podcast, that great things happen. And, and it, just, it just brings out a moment of gratitude for me where I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to everybody in the Selling from the Heart community, this global community of like-hearted sales professionals and leaders. It's just so cool. And so thank you for being a champion of the heart inside of this profession that we all love so much. You know, I I echo that. And I just, I, I just go back and a lot of you know, I'm going, I've been on a huge Napoleon Hill journey. And part one of, you know, one of the laws of success is developing a mastermind. And I feel like what we've developed here at Selling from the Heart globally is one huge global mastermind. We appreciate you. We do. And if you're new to Selling from the Heart, welcome. You've joined a growing community of sales professionals that are dedicated to being genuine, being authentic, building trust. We call it Selling from the Heart. And this is a movement of authenticity in the sales profession. We absolutely love hearing from you. You're part of this movement. If you're listening, we love hearing from our community. We got a shout out today here as we begin the show. Yeah, I want to give a special shout out to Chris Long. And at the end of this, a, a real brief, I got to give you the backstory on it. But Chris goes on to say, if you want to learn how to become more successful while also becoming more rewarded in the arena of sales, then this is your book. I have long believed that to sell is to serve. But Larry breaks mm-hmm. down both the how and the why. Quick backstory on Chris Long. He's really good friends with somebody I've known since third grade. So that's a long, long time ago, <laughs> well, massively long time ago. But Chris Long, I appreciate you. Oh, shout out, Chris. And shout out to everybody that is part of the community. We so appreciate you. And today, we have got a friend in the house who's going to add tremendous amount of value. Our guest today is Brad Adams. And you know Brad. He's a dynamic and engaging speaker, trainer, and coach. And he's developed his acumen for helping his clients transform their organizations and accelerate revenue growth through over two decades of experience building, leading, and coaching high-performance sales teams. I've seen Brad in action, and he is incredible. He coaches executives and sales teams, and he's been instrumental in developing and implementing customized sales onboarding programs and playbooks that have helped many clients accurately and uh, accelerate the ramp up and productivity. 
keep that sustained with new hires. I could just go on and on about <laughs> Brad Adams. Brad, welcome to the Selling from the Art Studios. It's <laughs> great to have you here. It is so great to be on this show. Um, great to see you again, Larry. Great to see you again, Daryl. Um, what a tremendous opportunity to have a conversation with you today. Always it's gonna great. Be fun. Always great seeing Brad Adams. But just a real quick props. Thanks for using my name first before Daryl's. Brad, that was awesome. Thanks. I was going in reverse alphabetical order. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, there's a wealth of information here, and I'm so excited about the conversation. As we get started, though, you know the question that every guest on the Selling from the Heart podcast answers, and that is, Brad, what does it mean to you to sell from the heart? That's such a good question. And, and I'm going to answer this by, by starting with a question that I was asked years ago. I, I was coaching a, a young SDR in San Francisco, and she came up to me and she said, she said, what's your why? And I was like, what are you talking about my why? You know, I didn't understand, you know, 20 something year old speak and I should have, but she said, what's your why? And it really got me thinking about, because I knew that I love training and coaching and it really got me thinking about, you know, what do I love about this? Mm. And I, I think what I love about this more than anything is every single day, every single person I coach, every leader I talk to, every group that I train, I have the opportunity to make someone just a little bit better. And that, whatever that does for them, you know, who knows? I've had a lot of great responses over the years. But what does it mean to sell from the heart? I, I think you've got to really first understand your why. And I think you've got to connect your why to what you do. And I think that you've got to create a better outcome for the world. A little bit altruistic, maybe, but but you've got to you got to make the world a better place with what you do. We're not just a PL on on some CFO's spreadsheet. We are humans talking with humans, and we're connecting with them, and we're understanding their needs. We're walking away when there's nothing for us to really that to do or to bring value to, and um, and and I would say that's what selling from the heart means to me is just really being a genuine person trying to help out other genuine people in a genuine way. Oh, this is so good because, um, by the way, I applaud you for bringing the why into this. But when you're a genuine person and you engage in a genuine way, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out. You've just now just risen to the top of the class. And, and it's just, it's unfortunate because more people in sales should act in a genuine, engaging way. But there's one thing that I, that I, I got to go back to because I saw Daryl's eyes and he was nodding. You said to help people in a better way. Daryl's a better way guy. And I just firmly believe a lot of salespeople out there, if they walk in a genuine manner, they engage in a genuine manner and they're there to help. They're helping their clients or their future clients find better ways of doing business absolutely spot on. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, I think that um, people can see through the BS if, if I'm not going to sit here and talk poorly about AI, but if AI could do our jobs, then we wouldn't be here. But I don't think that at this point, AI can because AI can't be a human. AI can't have that emotional intelligence. And, um, and, and, and that, that connectivity, that bond that's baked into our primitive brains I don't think it's going away anytime soon. And, and you have to earn somebody's trust. You have to do it quickly. And, and they're going to, you know, their sniff test, if, if it's just a, if it's a ruse that you're presenting to them, they're going to sniff it out and, and they're going to feel like you're not a good fit for them. And so um, I, I think that, you know, that, that's the challenge, isn't it? But really connecting with people on a deep level and, and really doing it for the right reasons. I've walked away from opportunities because it wasn't a good fit. Uh, because I didn't think that I could bring value, even though we're, they were willing to write a check. And, um, you know, my, my, my pocketbook may have hurt, but my conscience didn't. And long term, your pocketbook didn't hurt because those are the things that drive long term relationships. And the opposite kills long term relationships. And this is where slow is fast. And, and this is so beautiful. I love, I love the, the heart behind what you're saying as well. And I am a better way guy. And I think that when there's a better way, we need to find it. And one of the things I love about the way I've, I've been inside the mind of Brad Adams off and on over the last five years, I think I've, I, I love watching this guy. Cause I think 
I, I see Brad Adams. I see a mind that's always <laughs> spinning. Going, what's what is? How could we do this better? Well, I'm curious as you look out and you get exposure to so many different aspects of the sales world, especially across sales leadership um, right now. As you look out in the world of sales leadership, what are some some high level trends that you see that that really make you happy? That you go, you know what? This is something we need more of. This is what we need to grab on onto what are you seeing out there that is um, let's just say working and showing a lot of promise to help uh, sales teams move forward and do things better I, I think from a leader you know leader perspective it all comes down to that connectivity I, I, I you know we've all seen the memes we've seen the memes where the leader is sitting on top of the of the platform and all the people are carrying the leader up the mountain. And then we've seen the vice versa where the leader has the platform on their shoulders, carrying the team up the mountain. That's the leader that you need to be. You need to be, you need to understand what drives your team, what motivates your team, what each individual person's why is on your team. And then when you can connect that, you can, you can articulate a KPI or a metric or a, or a goal in their specific, you know, unique lens and in, in their terms. And so I think that when people, when leaders focus on truly, truly, in, you know, ingratiating themselves to their team, truly, you know, truly being subservient to the team's better needs versus having the ego and, 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 and not, you know, just sitting back in their office and throwing stuff out at them and hoping it'll stick. Um, and, and it sounds a little bit old school, but, but that's, I think that makes a, a truly great leader I think technology has actually gotten in the way because you know leaders rely on dashboards and they're coaching to dashboards instead of coaching people, and and when leaders can kind of stop and 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 use those as tools, but not have that as a replacement of those one to ones of those individual connections, understanding when they see someone is struggling a little bit and having a conversation just versus deciding that they suddenly have lost it. If the, the emotional, the connectivity things, I, I think that uh, I'm seeing more and more. And and one of the reasons we're seeing that is because of the, you know, we're still kind of in that great resignation period. And I think leaders have had to realize if they're going to keep their top people, they better make sure that they're connecting with them and supporting them and understanding them and and reducing the barriers to their success. And, um, and, and so I, I'm seeing a lot of that right now. And, and that's what makes me happy is that leaders are just being being human beings to their teams and um, and really focusing on their success. I'm sorry, I've got a little bit of a scratchy voice. The pollen is killing me in Georgia right now. You're so. doing great. You're doing great. We need all those azaleas for the masters. So. You know, but I, I, you know, Brad, you know, I appreciate that you brought up the connected part of this because good leaders out there, they inspire and influence. The best way to do this is to connect. And leaders, you know, they're almost like that rudder on the ship. I mean, they they really are controlling where this all goes. But leaders who struggle to connect, and let's just face it, th there are some that are out there. But good leaders who get the human side of this, who get the people side of this, who truly know how to, I call it leaning in, when they can lean into their people and really connect to them, not only on a professional level, but a personal level. What starts to happen is salespeople, I believe, they're really smart. They're really smart and they're really astute. And they're keen on to how their leadership and management is engaging with them. Disconnected leaders and leaders who aren't engaging, that behavior is modeled when you take that out into the marketplace. And that's why I'm just so glad you brought up this word connected, that we live in this connected world, but yet are we really connecting to our teams? And are our teams really connecting to their clients. It all starts with leadership. Yeah, I think if, when you set the tone as a leader and you show them how to connect, I think that they transfer that into, wow, this is how you do it. And now I can go and connect with my customers in this way. And when you don't show them how to connect, conversely, they maybe have a more difficult time connecting with their clients. Um, it, 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 it's a really, really big deal. You can't tell people what to do. You have to show them, you have to guide them, you have to encourage them, you have to inspire them. But when you just tell people what to do, it's almost like a, a salesperson being very transactionally minded with their clients. You, you're being a transactional minded leader when you're telling people what to do versus versus spending that extra time guiding them, provoking them, asking them very profound questions to get them to the realization that maybe they could do things a better way. 
It takes a lot of time, but it ultimately saves you time. I, uh, Daryl, you said earlier, I think speed up to slow down or slow down to speed up. I mm-hmm. think you said um, it's the same thing. If you spend a lot of time with your people and really, really influence and, and inspire them, you actually save time for yourself in the future because you don't have to keep going back to the same things over and over and over again. Yeah, that's that's so powerful. And it's just so funny. I'm just <laughs> sitting here thinking of of uh Oregon, especially in the highly relational industries we get so involved in, you know, the sales leader going, build relationships with your clients. We need to establish trust. Go. <laughs> you know, and there's like <laughs> you you take that, you want that out in the field, you model that with the team. That's a brilliant insight there what you end up, the culture you create with your team is the culture that ends up going out um, into the field. And I think that's, that's so powerful. And it, this, is a, this is a great time uh, for us to uh, recognize our friend. We're going to hear from our friend, Paul Caffrey. As you know, in the middle of the, the show, we feature a video from one of, someone in our community answering the question, what does it mean to sell from the heart? And just to prove that we're human, we forgot last week. So those uh, <laughs> regular listeners go, where was the video last week? Totally forgot. We were right in the middle of a great conversation. So this week, though, we're going to hear from our friend Paul Caffrey. He's going to share what it means to him to sell from the heart. And we'll pick up this uh, conversation after a hearing from Paul and a brief word from our sponsors. Are you ready to unleash your business? Work Better Now provides incredible full-time remote talent that positively impacts your business from day one. Free your time and resources from administrative tasks and from tedious hiring activities. Whether you need an executive assistant, need to staff up a department, or you're a high-performance sales professional that simply needs more time, Work Better Now's reliable, full-time, and dedicated remote workforce is vetted and matched specifically to your operational needs. Larry and I have enjoyed having our Work Better Now assistant, Carmen, on our team for almost two years, and she has made an enormous positive impact on our business. Head over to workbetternow.com to schedule a free consultation and transform your business. When you mention the word heart during your conversation, you will receive $150 off for the first three months of your service. Hey guys, Paul Caffrey here, author of The Work Before the Work. And it is my honor to have been asked by Larry Levine to explain what selling from the heart means to me. And for me, sales is a very special thing because you are putting the other person first. You are focused on making sure that they are successful. And when you take genuine interest in other people and in the success of other people, that's when truly great things happen. You know, you can be authentic. You can have a real relationship. And from there, you can go on and achieve so, so much. I can't tell you how many people that I've sold to 5, 10, 15 years ago who I'm still in contact with today. And I could pick up the phone, I could shoot them a message, we could just have a chat. And that comes down to building genuine relationships and being generally interested in making sure they succeed and being interested in how their journey continues to unfold. So if you think you want to actually improve how you're going to sell, this is a really fresh way to look at things. So I challenge you, you know, look at yourself and see, can you sell from your heart? Larry, big fan of what you're doing. Please keep it up and look forward to what's coming next. Uh, I, love it, Paul. I, I, I love Paul. So you can, you can already pick out his accent for those who may not be familiar. Paul's from Ireland. I've enjoyed getting to know Paul. Paul, you're amazing. Yeah, well, this is a great, uh, great addition to this conversation. It's like Paul has been listening in. It's so <laughs> beautiful. And by the way, just if you want to send uh, a video to Selling from the Heart to be featured on a future show, super simple. Just text the word video to 21,000. Just text video to 21,000. And we would love to hear from you and feature your answer to what it means to sell from the heart. But our friend Paul was talking about this this genuine caring and actually um, not just caring about the number. You said earlier, we're trying to coach spreadsheets instead of coaching people. I thought that was awesome, by the way. 
But this genuine caring about the people on our team, if we don't, I see the transition, uh, the, the translation here. If I expect my sales reps to genuinely care about their clients and prospects, it comes back to me to make sure that I'm genuinely caring about the team as well. I'm curious your thoughts on this. Yeah, it's 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 100. I've, I've, I was actually thinking about this <laughs> as, as he was speaking, and um, if I look back over my career, whenever I've had those sales slumps, we all go through them, right? Whenever I've had a sales slump, the one common denominator was this: I was focused on the metric, I was focused on the sale, and not focused on the people. Whenever I struggled to inspire somebody that was working for me, I was focused on their metric and not focused on the person, 100 percent of the time. And so now, now it's not a, a quick thing. Sometimes it's like they, you know, you, you lose track of what you're doing and all of a sudden you find yourself and you're like, whoa, I got to fix this. Um, but it, it's, it's easy to do so. Now, my natural inclination is to always focus on the people. But, you know, you get bogged down in what you do. It, it's easy to, to kind of lose sight of the mission. Um, but the moment that I get back on the horse and, and, I, and I, you know, have that, that hard mirror talk, if you will, about what are you doing? <laughs> well, how did you lose sight of this? And, uh, and then you, you get back on the, on the focusing on the right things on, on helping people on influencing people, making people's lives better, solving problems, all of those things, connecting, um, everything just writes itself. It's, it's, it's like the, you know, it's like the selling from the heart gods are, are, are slapping me around when I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this, 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 this I'm not sure great. Larry has that much power or influence, but no. uh, don't give don't give Larry a bigger head no. than he, he already <laughs> no. has. Guys, stop. <laughs> stop it. But, but I, I want to bring something up because, you know, we've talked about people skills in, you know, directly and indirectly. We've talked about relationships as well. And here's Brad, I'm going to throw you on the hot seat, but I know you can handle this, but cause you're, you're in there talking with sales leaders just as, you know, here at selling from the heart, we're engaged with sales leaders and things like this, but we always, as leaders, we get caught in this, Hey, right. You know, people buy from people. It's so overused people buy from people. They know, like, and trust so overused. Speak to sales leaders who, you know, use some of these phrases who understand and they, you know, they go, hey, people do buy from people, but how come they're not coaching? I'm just curious your opinion on this. Where do you think the disconnect comes between what they say versus what they do? And I, I'm saying this specifically because I don't believe there's enough coaching at a leadership level with salespeople on how to develop people skills and relational skills, yet we know how important it is. Can you speak to that? And I know I threw you on the hot seat, but I think you can handle it. Brad's got this. I think I got it. I think I got yeah. it. Um, this is going to sound so simple, but I, I think this is the root cause of, of people's lack of doing this. And it's a massive investment of their time. I mean, that's, that's it. And so, and, and they, they look at, you know, we teach that, that time is impactful, important, or trivial, trivial. And, and every day you can choose to do activities that are impactful, important, or trivial. And as a salesperson, impactful is driving revenue, creating relationships. Mm -hmm. But as a leader, impactful is influencing your team. And yet we get bogged down in reports and spreadsheets and onboarding and making sure everybody knows where the water cooler is. And, and, and interviewing people, which is, which, you know, getting, bringing people on is, is the lifeblood of your team. But, but we forget about just, you know, and, and we teach somebody something and then we're like, okay, we set it and forget it and we let them go. And then we wonder why six months later, all of a sudden they're floundering a bit. It's because we didn't give them that consistent daily, weekly coaching that they need. We didn't coach their calls. We didn't coach their discovery. We didn't coach um, their, their preparation for a really large meeting. We take over meetings for them rather than let them ask the questions and, and coach them afterwards. We, it, we don't do coaching as leaders because it's really hard and it's really time consuming. Mm -hmm. But yet, if we were to do that, we would mold the person into being a better relationship seller. It's just hard. And I think leaders back away from it because of that. Yeah, and it, it it just goes back to what we were saying earlier, right? It's slow down to speed up, and and these are the things, you know. I've in in the time I've spent as a sales manager, I've I remember the moments with the lines out the door, and you know, it's it, it's a high pressure job. You're working to hit 
numbers through your team and, and all of that. And, and it feels like sometimes I don't have time to do that. But this transfers through to your sales team as well. We want our sales team to build relationships and go deeper and wider in accounts, especially in a lot of full cycle, high, high relational um, sales teams. And yet, you know, are we modeling that investment with our salespeople in the same way we want them to model that um, with their ideal clients in, in building and in cross selling and deepening those relationships? And this is where I think this, you know, as I'm, I'm thinking about this and, and this conversation, there's a lot of mirror moments here that are coming back to, to the same central theme, which is investing. If I invest in my people, I'm going to model them investing in their people, which is their prospects and clients. And if I, if I invest in, in, if I don't make that investment, um, it may, it may shortcut me in the, in the short term, but it's going to shortchange me in the long term. And, and this, this, um, this excellence in, in leadership, this is where I think the difference between sales management, maybe and sales leadership, um, management, I'm going to manage towards a, a goal, which we have to do. Leadership is that, uh, higher calling of actually influencing and motivating the team. And, and that you're right is not a, there's no easy button on that one. That's an investment of time over time. And, um, but I think I agree, I agree that this is going to pay off massive dividends. But here's my question to you, Brad is, when you think about this in the context of either a, a sales leader or a sales professional is listening in and going, yeah, maybe, maybe I'm coming up a little short in the, in what we're talking about here. What are some good, reasonable first steps from your perspective for a leader to take in the direction of what we're talking about here today? I think just realign the importance realize that you know what could be more important if, if you are you know if, if your job is to lead a group of people what can be more important than leading the group of people and I know mm-hmm. that sounds simple but but I, I've, I've been on site with clients and and the leader will come out and say hey my team's not doing these things go fix it and then they'll go tuck away in their office and close the door it's like why aren't you out here amongst them why aren't you out here with them? Why aren't you out here helping them? People don't do dumb things on purpose. These these people that you hired are not doing these things because they're trying to be resistant or because they're lazy. They're doing them because they don't know what else to do because you haven't inspired them or you haven't or you haven't coached them. So make the main thing be the main thing. What is that? Like a Ricky Bobby quote or something? <laughs> Dude, it's all good. You can quote Ricky Bobby all day long, Brad Adams. It's make all good. Make the main thing the main thing. And, and if your job is to coach and lead people, then spend time and invest time. And, and frankly, you're not going to coach them and they're not going to listen to you if you don't also have their trust. One mm-hmm. way to teach people how to gain trust is to gain their trust first. Bingo. So powerful. I just, you know what? Oh, Daryl is going to kill me when I drop this, but I'm going to do it. Brad Adams just brought up Ricky Bobby, right? <laughs> but I'm now I'm going to throw out a Ted Lasso thing. Is just a, just a, this just proves what we're speaking about. I firmly believe matters, right? For all those Ted Lasso fans, if you're not a Ted Lasso fan, become one, right? Real. Watch how he engages with the professional athletes as portrayed on Ted Lasso. All people. Mm -hmm. He's 100% people. He's 100% genuine. He's engaging. He leans in and it's selling from their heart. We call that giving a rep. And look what transpired season over season with this team. Goes back to slow down, to speed things up. If sales leaders would invest in engaging and being genuine with their team, this equates to hard dollars. That's why we believe soft skills yield you hard dollars. But I can't believe, right? Brad, you set me up. You said Ricky Bobby. I had to go Ted Lasso, but it's to prove a point. These are, you know, right? They're, they're movie characters, right? Sitcom type things. But it proves out what we're speaking about does work. For 100%. sure. I love it. I love it. <laughs> Now we're going to do is bring in a Fletch quote. 
Well, that's good. It is. Uh, this uh, this has been such a great conversation, and and it is time to shake and bake here in a minute. And <laughs> what we what I do want to say um, is is first of all, Brad, I want to say just a huge thank you for sharing your time and your heart with us today. I, I love. I've I've enjoyed. Um, knowing you over the last five years. And then also, like I said at the beginning, I watch and I can tell that you're somebody who is always um, thinking about how can we do this better and you have a heart to help people. And so I want to cheer you on and just recognize that in you. I think you're uh, just incredible, incredible human being and asset to the sales profession in general. So thank you for that. And I mean that in all sincerity. And, um, you know, and, and then the second thing I would want to ask is, how can people get more Brad Adams in their life? Uh, what can what can we do to 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 get more Brad in our life on a regular basis? Now you're reminding me of Saturday Night Live, more cowbell. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I think we need more Brad Adams. <laughs> and don't think I didn't recognize Shake and Bake, by the way. So you're no better than the rest of us, Daryl. <laughs> That's I good. Shake and Bake in. Hey, we got two Southerners surrounding uh, surrounding Larry. So this is good for him. Well, he's from Southern California. That that can yeah, almost count. that's true. Fair enough. Right? That can almost count. Hey, thanks so, for sticking up for me, Brad. <laughs> yeah. So, how can we get more Brad Adams in our life? More so you cowbell want to contact information. Is that or, <laughs> yeah? Personal phone number, number address. Thing. That's it. <laughs> favorite caller. What do you like doing on Saturday? <laughs> yeah, meet me on the hiking trail. I'll be happy to coach you as long as you you know you. There we go. Kids. Now you're speaking my language. That's awesome. Yeah, Brad Adams on LinkedIn. Uh, I'd love to connect with you. If if there's anything I can do to help you, I'm I'm here. I'm on awesome. LinkedIn. My phone number's there. Just reach out. Awesome. Hey, well, I, we hey, hey real quick, Daryl, and, and we can wrap up. I just got to throw this out there just because I just love what Brad Adams throws down in the in the in sixty tight, concise seconds. Speak to sales leaders out there who um, are listening in. What? Just give us some work you know, some inspirational thoughts on being genuine, engaging, just 60 seconds of Brad, take us away. And then I appreciate you. Don't do it for your ego. Do it for theirs. Boom. That was less that than was 60, just, seconds. 60 seconds. That was, that was good. <laughs> that was good. <laughs> <Hold my gear. laughs> I love it. That was a great way to, to wrap. And, and Brad, once again, thank you for sharing uh, your time and your heart with us. You're a true selling from the heart champion. We appreciate you. I appreciate you having me today. Thanks, guys. You're awesome. Welcome. awesome. <laughs> that was a great Hello, Brad Adams. Adams. Always uh, a good conversation with Brad. And Larry, I'm curious, what are what are what is your biggest takeaway um, from what we've been discussing here today? It's you know, it goes, it goes back to the very beginning. And Brad used the word connected, genuine. Mm-hmm engaging and we and used it over and over again here's my here's my challenge what i would encourage everybody is truly lean in and some of you might be going what do you what do you mean by leaning in just lean into your people yeah right unpack the things they're working on what makes them tick what makes them come alive i promise you this how you connect with your people has a direct impact on how they connect with your clients and their future clients. It's just lean in, give a rip, right? I can't believe you brought Ricky Bobby into this. I love it, but shake and bake with your people. <laughs> well, uh, selling from the heart is now stooped to an all time low. But I will say <laughs> that, you know, what we're talking about here uh, in all seriousness is what we model with our sales teams in the office and on our team is what gets modeled out in the field. And it's not just the raw sales skills. Um, it's It's the authenticity. It's the time invested. It's the genuine caring. And these things um, do take time. I think Brad made a good point, but this is the investment in our people that is going to pay massive dividends in not only results, but also uh, retention and just flat out enjoying your job and enjoying your team and creating that culture. So, hey, I love all of this. I love these discussions we get to have every week. Larry, we've got an incredible roster of guests coming on throughout the rest of this spring on into the summer. So I'll have two asks. Number one, make sure to subscribe if you're listening on YouTube. Uh, You get to see us in full Technicolor on YouTube. Hit subscribe. If you're not subscribed, go to YouTube and uh, subscribe to Selling from the Heart for not only the episodes, but all of the shorts and bonus items that come in between. We'll make sure to put the YouTube link in the show notes. So you can just click on that right there on your phone 
from whatever mobile app you're uh, listening to this podcast on. Second of all, if you would be kind enough to do what so many of you have done already, and that's leave us a review. This helps us spread the word about Selling from the Heart, this movement of authenticity in the sales profession. We appreciate you. Larry, some kind words to take us home. It's just, we're leading a movement, and that movement's around authenticity, integrity, and trust in the sales world. It's long overdue. Simple ask, will you join us? Just That's stand right. up, rise up, and say yes. I love it. Well, until next time, keep being genuine, keep being authentic, keep building trust, and most of all, sell from the heart. <laughs>